Hey, thank you for coming to listen to the Lichen Sclerosis podcast. My name is Kathy, and this is our journal of learning about and living with lichen sclerosis. Each week, I study an aspect of lichen sclerosis, bring you back the information, and let you know how it's affected my life. I'm not a medical professional. I just bring you the information so you can start a conversation with your medical professional. This week, I'm going to be sharing some personal and potentially graphic information. So if you're sensitive to that, I completely understand. And you probably want to skip this episode. I also want to set proper expectations. Uh, Lichen sclerosis has a lot of different symptoms and there are there's a wide range of progressions to them. Unfortunately, I cannot cover them all in one episode or it'd be like hours long. So this episode's not going to focus on uh, women with severe fusing or, or other sexual complications that might require surgery. But To honor those that are suffering those awful symptoms, I will be doing a future episode. My plan is to have a medical professional or one of our lichen sclerosis sisters who has dealt with these complications to come and speak with you because these are not my experiences and and I completely respect your plight. And I don't feel comfortable speaking on that because it is so major. And I definitely want to respect that the information come from the proper source. So if you're a medical professional or you are a sister who would like to share and help the community, please reach out. You can send me an email at Kathy with a K at lichensclerosispodcast.com and we can set up an interview date and definitely bring that much needed information to our sisters. I also have a question for you because I need y'all support right now. I'll put that at the end of the episode. All right. Let's talk about sex, baby. How does lichen sclerosis affect sex? How do we talk to our partners about sex with lichen sclerosis? And how can we make sex better when we have lichen sclerosis? So does lichen sclerosis change sex for us? Hmm. I think if you ask just about any woman with lichen sclerosis, the resounding answer would be, uh, yeah. And there is a scientific study that uh, backs us up. So in 2014, they did a study on the impact of vulvular lichen sclerosis on sexual dysfunction. They studied 337 women and they broke them up into three groups. They had a lichen sclerosis group, a group that had chronic yeast infections, and a group that was healthy. That means they had no medical problems, everything, right? They were made up of different ages, uh, races, relationship status, economic statuses. And at the end of the study, they concluded, quote, Women with lichen sclerosis suffer from a greater degree of sexual dysfunction than both healthy women and those with candida infections. And women with lichen sclerosis have less frequent sexual activity and less satisfying sexual activity when compared with controls, end quote. Why? Why is it we're having less sex and less satisfying sex. Well, I was able to break it down into four main topics of why. Pain, libido, physically, and mentally and emotionally. Let's talk about pain. When we have lichen sclerosis, our vulva skin is thin. 
So obviously, when there's any kind of friction, you run the risk of tearing, of burning, not to mention if you have fissures or any kind of blisters or anything like that at the time. These are going to be painful. So I didn't even realize that lichen sclerosis was causing me to have pain during sex until I started doing research. So I would have sex with my husband and I would feel this burning and I just figured, oh, it must be just from me scratching and maybe I had a scratch and, but I love my husband so much that, and I wanted to be with him. So I would kind of just work through it and try to mentally kind of just not be there, like listen, you know, paying attention to the pain and just trying to find the pleasure in it. But it is hard sometimes. And so I just kept going. which looking back, I know I shouldn't have because I wasn't doing my body any good and mentally it did affect me down the road. Again, hindsight, while I was going through it, these are not the thoughts that were going through my mind. But looking back, I can see how it totally affected me. Having sex while you are and pain can also cause something called vaginismus. And that is where your vagina just contracts to the point where it doesn't want to let anything in because it's anticipating the pain. It's your body's reaction to, uh-uh, we're not, we're not, we're going to stop this pain before it even starts. We ain't even going to let you in because we don't want to hurt. And who can blame her? She's trying to protect us, even when we don't need protecting. So this reflex that we develop then furthers into a whole nother complication that stops us from having sex. So that's pain. We're gonna, they're going to have pain while we are having sex because the friction is going to cause the tears and the burning or we go into it already having fissures and tears and and that's going to e- cause even more pain libido so self esteem has a lot to do with libido if you don't feel good about yourself and worthy and beautiful, then you're not going to be a sexual creature. You're just not going to want to put yourself in that position where you feel like I'm not good enough. I don't know if, if he desires me. I don't know if he wants me. And so now that self-esteem issue is now going to carry over into anxiety. All those questions are running through your mind and you fear. Now you have fear, fear of rejection. Going along with the fear of will it hurt? Because if it hurt a little bit last time, what if it hurts again the next time? What if it hurts worse? Why would I want to put myself in that position? So you start losing your libido. You think about sex less and less and you you put yourself out there less and less until the point where you're like, hmm, I don't care if we have sex or not. It's not important to me anymore because I don't want to start running through that whole cycle. These are subconscious thoughts. These are not things that you are thinking up front. So many revelations I've had since researching lichen sclerosis. I didn't realize that I was pulling away 
from my husband. We had a very, very healthy sex life before I got like his cirrhosis. Afterwards, not only was I worried, scared, I was worried and scared about how he was going to react, how he was going to look at me. Because I looked at myself differently. And I projected on him. And it wasn't fair to him because I withdrew. For example, I was prescribed a topical medicine. And, you know, he would initiate sex. And here I just put this medicine on. And I didn't know how... You know, if this got on him, how would it how would it affect him? You know, oral sex was a huge part of our sex life and he he would want to do oral sex. And I'm not going to let him go down there and here. I just put, you know, I put this medicine on. Even if I washed it off, I didn't know what kind of residue it would, you know, what it would have. So I was I was scared. And so I would tell him not to, to the point where he quit offering. And after he quit offering, I quit, I didn't ask and didn't realize that we weren't doing that anymore until months down the line. It was a slow progression. Physically, you can have a little bit of fusing where you're not closed all the way, but your labia start closing in where your hole gets smaller and smaller and you just can't take any kind of penetration. Not to mention, like we talked about before, the vaginismus. It will literally clamp up and close your vagina to where there's no penetration possible. You just cannot relax and be in the moment. And you, you know, if you can't relax and be in the moment, there's, there's no reason to have sex. You have no desire, right? You're just trying to get it over with to please your partner, which does not bode well for your mental status and your emotional status, which is the next part, mentally and emotionally. All of those other three aspects, pain, libido, physicality, all of those are going to feed into your mental and emotional state. And we all know sex is hugely mental and emotional. That anxiety and self-doubt, that low self-esteem is going to play in your mind. You're unsure if you're desirable. Will you still enjoy sex? How are you going to perform? Is it going to hurt? All of these things are cycling through your brain when, you know, you're you're going through foreplay and you're actually going through the act. And if you're not there mentally and emotionally, you're not going to be able to be there physically. And if you push through, all it's going to do is make you pull away in the future. The next time your partner initiates sex, you're going to be like, uh, I ain't going to put myself in that, pos- in that position again. Uh-uh. Ain't going to do it. We're going to have to pass on that. And then you keep passing and passing and passing. And guess what? Now you're having less sex. And when you do have sex, you worry about if it's going to hurt. You're not going to be in the in the right headspace, which means you run the risk of it hurting and you're going to be less satisfied because you're more than likely. Whereas you love your partner, you're not going to be there in the right headspace, but you're trying to do it for your partner. And that ain't right. So how do we start getting over these things? How do we talk to our partners about sex and lichen sclerosis? How do we talk to our partners so that they are part of our process of healing? 
of making these experiences still enjoyable. I think it depends on where you are in your relationship. If you are in a long-term relationship, then I think you have it the easiest because you've had life experiences with this person. This person's been with you through the ups, through the downs. You have a shared past. Sex is probably not the number one priority in your relationship. In my opinion, it shouldn't be, but you know, everybody's different to each their own. Personally, it's not in my relationship. I've been with my husband 20 years. It'll be 20 years come June. And we've done long distance. We've done where he has been sick and we haven't been able to have sex. And now I'm going through like a sclerosis and it's definitely affected our sex life. But our relationship is still as strong as it has ever been because communication. We got to talk to our partners. We can't hide from them our feelings. We, we got to let them know that we need their emotional support. They also need to know how we're feeling and what we're thinking so that they don't push. If you don't talk to your partner, how are they supposed to know when you're having a flare up or when you're in pain or that you are feeling vulnerable or that you, you're wondering, do they still see you in the same light sexually? I straight up went and asked my husband, do you still find me desirable? Do you still want to have sex with me? Did seeing the blister on my vulva turn you off? Because these are all things I was thinking about mentally. And I ain't going to lie to you and tell you I asked him straight out. I asked him two years later, okay? Because I ran through that cycle of the low self-esteem, the self-doubt, the anxiety, the fear. I let all of that marinate. All of it. And after starting this podcast, I have been able to reflect and have these conversations with him that in the moment, I didn't realize I needed to. So have those conversations with your partner if you haven't. They will be revealing, believe me. And you're gonna come out of it in so much of a better place because you're gonna know either way. Your, your, your mind's not going to be able to make up these, these ghosts, you know, you're going to have a solid foundation and then you can have a further conversation depending on what the answers are. I'm not telling you that your partner is going to be all gun ho and, you know, supportive. I don't know your relationship, so I ain't even going to tell you that, but I will tell you that no matter what, you are going to be in a better place where you can make concrete, better decisions for yourself. And as a couple, we got to talk. We got to talk to our partners. First thing, if you haven't really talked to your partner about what lichen sclerosis is, sit down with them. Tell them what the symptoms are, what your symptoms are. Have him listen to episode four of the podcast. Listen to it together. And that way, if he has questions, you can answer them for him. Use it as a resource. It's at lichenscarosispodcast.com slash symptoms. I also have it up on YouTube. If they're more of a visual learner, the YouTube channel is Lichen Sclerosis Podcast. Have that conversation and go from there. Let them know how you feel physically, mentally, emotionally. Don't just give them your physical symptoms. Let them know what you're thinking. Let them know your fears, your anxieties. This is your partner. You've been with them for a long time. They know you. They love you. They want to help you. And take it slow. If they have a lot of questions, don't overwhelm them too much. Give you, you know, your partner, 
given what they can handle. And then it might have to be a couple conversations. It might have to be over a couple of days. You might need to take it slow for your own sake. If you are not that type of person that just vomits all of all of your emotions on somebody, you may want to parcel it out, but definitely go back and finish the conversation. If you're in a new or casual relationship, I think you have it a little harder because you and this person don't have as many life experiences together. You may be learning each other. You may not know exactly where your relationship is or what your future is. You may be unsure about how important sex is to your partner but you still need to have those conversations. Again, be open, be honest, be prepared to answer a lot of questions. You know, they may ask, is it an STD? Is it contagious? Are we still going to be able to have sex? Answer them honestly about where you are in your progression of this disease. Also let them know what the future might bring. And guess what? If they decide this is not the relationship for them, it's better you find out now than in the future when you are much more invested. If this is just a a casual relationship and y'all just, you know, doing it when you do it, then you ain't got to tell them nothing, I think. I mean, you just don't have sex when you're having a flare up. You don't have sex when you feel like it. Y'all don't know each other or anything. But you know your relationship. Now, if you're dating, at what point do you tell them that you have lichen sclerosis and how it can affect your sex life? You got to think about, will they want to commit to a relationship where you can go some stretches of time without having sex? Because either you're not feeling it or you're in physical pain. And you also got to worry about, are they going to believe you that it's not an STD? I know talking to my husband, he was like, if when he was younger and we had just started dating, he might think that I was hiding an STD because he'd never heard of lichen sclerosis. And I don't blame him. I'd never heard of lichen sclerosis. So you know the person that you're dating You'll know what type of person they are and if they're going to be supportive, if they're going to have a lot of questions, prepare for your person. Take into account the level of your relationship and the maturity of your person. Like I said, if it's casual, do you. Just don't see them when when you're having a flare up or you don't feel like having sex. But if you're getting serious, have the conversation, explain what lichen sclerosis is, explain your symptoms, tell them what it could look like in the future. You know, you're not trying to scare them. You're just trying to give them a real idea of this is what you are signing up for. Because you don't want to not tell them and then the future comes and you, you know, have sex once every three months or once a month, and that's not enough for them. And they're like, okay, this is not what I signed up for. If sex is really important to this person, then they've got to make a decision. But be honest with them, take all of their questions, answer them. But again, try not to overwhelm them. And don't overwhelm yourself. If you got to make it multiple conversations, then do that. Just remember, they have to commit to taking on this life sentence if they're going to be with you. Just because your symptoms are not bad now, you don't know what the future can bring. So what are some things that we can do to make sex better with lichen sclerosis? After some extensive research, I found that you definitely want to use lube. 
you want to use a lube that's hypoallergenic. I found a recommendation to use coconut oil. I've never used it, but apparently it works as a good natural lube. You also want to maybe look at changing how you have sex. So like for me, I was very big on uh, foreplay and finger play, but now I can't tolerate it. It just, it's uncomfortable. It it hurts, you know, uh, if he does it too hard, it, you know, can tear me or scratch me. And it's unfortunate because I really enjoyed it. So now we have to figure out different ways of having that foreplay and getting to that aroused state. So experiment, use toys, maybe use soft toys instead of hard toys. Communicate, open up a whole new level of communication when it comes to sex. Talking about sex is sexy. It's just sexy, you know? So maybe it's more of a verbal foreplay or visual foreplay. Try unconventional sex acts. Try something different sexually. Maybe you try a different position or or try something new, something that maybe doesn't require as much penetration. And if you do have fusing where you're not able to have penetration the way you used to, there are what's called medical dilators. And they come in varying sizes, starting from the smallest, working its way up in increments. And you use these to kind of widen the vagina or uh, when you have vaginismus, uh, they've been used to relax the vagina to prepare it for insertion. So you may need to use that if it's Um, more of a physical ailment that doesn't let you have penetration, that may be one way to go. If you have any tips that I have not talked about to help us have better sex with LS, go to the website lichensclerosispodcast.com slash sex and leave it in the comments so we can all learn. So lichen sclerosis, it can change the way we look at ourselves, how we look at sex, it affects our self-esteem, the fear of pain can be a deterrent, and it can affect how satisfying our sex is. So we have to communicate with our partners, we have to explain our, our pain levels, we have to explain our lower libido, our anxieties, our our self-esteem. We got to let them know the amount of sex and what we can do and how it could change in the future so that their expectations meet where we are. Because the worst thing that can happen is you feel pressured to perform and now you are doing yourself more mental and physical harm. We need to come up with a plan with our partners, how we're going to navigate these changes that have happened to our sex life and what changes we will make if things progress. We got to find new ways of being intimate with minimal or no penetration. Sometimes it's just got to happen. Maybe we start looking into using lubrications. And if all of that doesn't work, Maybe we start looking into more aggressive treatments. I haven't researched too much, but I've seen that there are laser treatments and uh, stem cell treatments that can help that are way more aggressive than just the topical ointments that we're given. So that is lichen sclerosis and sex. I hope that you have picked up a tip or two. And if you know someone who this can be beneficial for them, please share, send them the episode. And at least you can start a conversation. And I'm always more than happy to talk to anyone, reach out to me. We're growing our community. And I can't wait to speak to you. So on a personal note, 
I've been struggling these last couple of days. I have all this tension and change in the world right now has just it hit me like a ton of bricks a couple of days ago. I was ready to record this episode. I was all excited to get home and get on the mic. And as I was driving, I just busted out in tears. I was at a, a stoplight and I was just crying. And I was trying to figure out why I was crying. And then eventually I just told myself, just let it go. Why are you trying to figure it out? Just let it go. You, you need to cry, just cry. And I did. And so I've taken the last couple of days to kind of just reset, let my body kind of go through its motions. Just been fatigued and with headaches and just, but I'm on here now. I'm still dealing with the sinus infection. I'm still stuffed up, but I've also noticed something completely different, which is freaking me out. Have you ever had tingling, like a tingling sensation on your vulva? Like, literally, I'm just sitting and all of a sudden, I'll feel like a tingling sensation, like when one of your limbs goes numb. And then all of a sudden, you know, the blood starts going, flowing again, and you get like a tingling sensation. Like, I feel that. And I don't know if I should be worried because this is something new and this is not something that I've come across in my research. And I don't know what it means. So if you felt this or you know what this means, please, 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 please shoot me an email. Let me know if this is something that I need to be concerned about or if this is something that is normal and maybe I've just never paid attention to it. I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm freaking out a little bit, but I'm trying not to freak out because, you know, it's just tingly. But I don't know. I think it's just everything with this coronavirus and the state of the world today that it's just all, all at once. So please, 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 please. Shoot me an email, lichensclerosispodcast at gmail.com. You can even go on the website if you want and leave me a voicemail, lichensclerosispodcast.com, and let me know. One last thing, I'm on Instagram, baby. Yes, I finally went social. My Instagram handle is, of course, at lichensclerosispodcast, and I've met some amazing women there and they are helping me to broaden our community they're so welcoming so if you are on instagram please follow me i will follow you back get in touch reach out at like in sclerosis podcast so i hope you have an amazing week and i will see you next time bye